No, we, we can't talk Hold about up. that. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be quoting FBI crime statistics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, it is recording, and uh, we, we're good to go in that regard. So, I guess we'll just... What do you want to say our names or something? Yeah, well, uh, took about six, seven months, but welcome to episode two. I don't even want um, to think of the first episode as an actual episode. <laughs> episode <two. laughs> 1.5 of the Gunbar Boys podcast. Yeah, dude, I fucking totally forgot about what our first one was even about until I put it on my story last week. We were going to do it. And- People were messaging me about what we talked about, and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, Yeah, I, it was honestly a disgrace, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Um, yeah. I am Extendo Clipazine, uh, one, 1.5k followers, and this is the the main man of the show, Fud's Gun Shop, with, <laughs> uh, what is it, 6 million now? Uh, 6.5, nah, 15.3. Nah, um, so, you know, we're not the coolest kids on the block, but, uh, you know, we, we got a voice and we're willing yeah. to share. Um, so today I figured we could dedicate a lot of this to these Instagram questions that we got. Uh, well, that I got. I don't know if you actually did a poll, but I did. I did. I did not read any of them. I have to go back. Um, my highlights and find them, but you go ahead. So like I said, uh, I figured we'd go through some of these questions because I, I don't know what the fuck to talk about. I mean, let's be real. You know, Virginia's going to turn into a, a smoking crater and the country's <laughs> going to go up. And uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Obviously, that's going to be one of the points here. Um, and as we stand right now on the 19th of January... Um, what is it, tomorrow, or is it today? Yeah, that it's tomorrow. So, this, by the time I get this out, it'll probably be tomorrow, so yeah, it, it's not going to matter. But as we stand right now, um, it, it's interesting stuff going on in Virginia. You want <clears throat> to kind of go over that real quick? You probably know more than I. It's uh, <clears throat> Virginia's definitely going to be a turning point. I hope, it, I hope it'll turn out to be a positive thing. But but, what, are, what are we looking at in terms of the situation over there? Like, what, what, why, why is it happening? What's going on? Why? Well, it's uh, old boy. Uh, I always forget how to pronounce his name. Northam, the governor, wants to enact a whole bunch of bullshit, uh, non-constitutional gun laws. Yeah, so he's. Like, he's... I, I, yeah, I haven't even really looked at what they are, like every one of them, but there's a lot in there. Pretty shit. He's pushing for some pretty heavy gun control, and um, yeah. the yeah, majority of Virginians and the majority of, well, I would say most people really don't want that. Um, That's right. Holy fuck, what was that? <laughs> That's the clock I have in my room. It's a Mustang clock on the hour. It revs up. It sounded like... The living dead being resurrected. <laughs> no, that's just my boomer clock. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, so yeah, it, it, it's an interesting situation. Like I said, I don't think most people want what's being talked about. Um, mm-hmm. wh- from what I was seeing, and I could be wrong, but there were a lot of uh, local police and I want to say National Guard that didn't want to get involved. Um, because yeah, they too yeah. thought it was unconstitutional. I'm not sure what happened to that. Because what I'm hearing now is, oh, the police have these uh, sniper towers and they've got all this stuff set up. And I'm, I'm not sure, you know, if that's still the same police force that said they weren't going to do it. And now they're doing it or if they brought in outside sources. Um, another interesting thing I saw was someone was saying that, uh, and this is all speculation. Nobody knows for sure, I guess. Unless you're there, but they're saying Antifa's going to show up dressed as, like, uh, Trump supporters and, like, try to cause a big issue and, like, false flag it. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I saw that, too. I shared that on my story. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's going to be an absolute shit show, even if there is no 
violence. Hope there's not. But what it is is uh, over the last month or so, the local police departments in Virginia, a lot of them have said, you know, we're going to uh, deputize everybody in our county. That way, you know, they're at that moment, law enforcement, you know, they can have guns and all and you know, they can open carry and you know that would bridge the gap between uh civilians and law enforcement so it wouldn't the gun laws wouldn't matter then now <clears throat> all these people coming in with the giant battering rams and the uh, riot gear and the sniper towers and the surveillance vans that's all state from what i've seen state police not not you know not the good old boys but these are the the king's men, so to speak. <laughs> so, do you think that uh, Virginia's proximity to, like, D.C. is what prompted this? Because I know a lot of Virginia is uh, rural. Um, mm -hmm. You would think the, ma the majority of that, whether it be west or just regular old Virginia, is going to be, uh, you know, pro-2A or more of a conservative um, demographic. So... Do you think it's just, and, and from what I was seeing with the, uh, I think there were sanctuary counties um, yeah. that were, from what I was seeing, the majority of Virginia was sanctuary counties, um, but yeah. you're seeing these small little groups um, that I think just represent the minority of politicians um, with their agenda. And then it's interesting to me because you can see the difference between what the civilians want, what the what your average person wants, and what the people in power want. Um, yeah. and, and we'll see because, truthfully, the power that is given to these people is given to them by the people below them. You know, the the peons, the uh, the plebeian citizens. <laughs> yeah. The only reason these people are in office is because they are allowed to be in office. So, um, you, you kind of what they're doing is they. are Tipping the scale and testing things, testing the waters, and we'll see. I don't want any violence. I don't want anything bad to happen. Uh, I'm a simple man. I like uh, running water and electricity. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know what? you got to draw the line somewhere. It probably just got me on a watch list, but that's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I, do, I do recall from our first podcast talking about OPSEC and you know just about how all these people are making memes about the, the old Claymore Roombas and such. And we're all, myself included, hashtagging a boogaloo. So there's for probably literal fucking hundreds of thousands of memes. You know, most of them satirical, but some of them, you know, straight up you well, know, with plans. No, so and I, I saw that today on Instagram this morning. You know, a lot of people posting uh, <clears throat> where they're going to be, what they're going to be dress like what you know who they're going to be with and i just really hope that doesn't come back to screw screw them over because i've seen there's been a lot of like uh aerial surveillance i can pick up information from cell phones i mean it's, it's getting like like crazy you know people are saying you're not bring cell phones bring you know uh, uh handheld portable radios you know don't bring your cell phone cover your face wear a mask cover your ears and all kinds of stuff so i have no idea what's going to happen but <clears throat> all i know is that throughout the past year cops across the country have been really you know oh i feared for my life so yes i i, I yeeted this person out of existence so there's a whole crowd of people legally armed gun owners and one old bubba negligently discharges his mosin into the air and yeah, that's all it's going to take for uh second coming of the old Boston Massacre around the time of the first revolution. Mark that the first, not the, but the first. So you think in, you know, when we roll up with our, our YC-9s um, in the year 2077. <laughs> um, yeah, that'll probably be when we get them. Yeah, with our cybernetic enhancements. Yeah. Um, that, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, man. We will definitely see what happens. Uh, kind of bad news either way um, for all, but whatever. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. You want to just jump into these questions then? 
Yeah, I can't fucking find any of mine. I have no idea what happened to it. I can't find them on archive. I have a so. total of like 10 maybe, so this won't last long. But the first one comes to us from a guy that I work with. Um, and it's not a question. It's just a statement. And that statement is uh, basically that I suck. But he's talking about my Wasser 10 being made into a sniper rifle, which oh yeah didn't, oh, didn't work. Um, I, let me just address that real quick because, listen, <laughs> uh, fuck, I don't know. I think it looks cool, uh, and that's about that's about it. <laughs> There's not much else I can say, you know. Um, I will say that I contacted the company that uh, that I bought that optic from, the uh, four, fixed four times uh, optic, and they uh, sent me a manual that wasn't in Russian. Oh, and nice. let me know how to tighten it down. And I went to the range yesterday with uh, the GF, and we shot it, and um, it held it held its zero, uh, which is something it wasn't doing before. So, you know, great. I know 7.62 by 39, especially out of like an AK, isn't going to be the most accurate. But I'm not looking for 500 yards. I'm looking for like uh, sub 100. Um, yeah. Around around here at least, not to like dox myself or anything, but you know yeah, where yeah, we there's live. Not, there's there's just, not a lot of places shoot over 100 yards. That's yeah. not like a designated range. This is true. Now I will say I do plan to move to Utah soon, so um, I will be fucked <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when I get dinked from a mile by a dude with a Christensen 6.5, <laughs> and I, I'm just spraying him down with my washer. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Fuck. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I like I like your AR a lot, and uh, but that you have like a what a fixed three times on yours, right? No, I have the uh, primary arms one to six variable. Okay, so, but yeah. you see, like, I don't know, because you see, like Vortex, I think they have the uh, the strike fire or something like that, and that's a fixed three times, and three times power. I mean, that's that's a good bit of that's a good hundred yards and in kind of optic right there. Yeah, three three times that that's commitment. <laughs> well, and I figured, oh well, four times it's just one more power magnified. Why not? Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, uh, the the next question or topic, fuck, is uh, I I ran, <laughs> and when when uh when I asked these questions, this was when. You know, the whole bombing of the base thing was happening. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest, you know, the whole, oh, we're getting drafted thing. This kind of goes hand in hand with what's happening in Virginia, too. Not not really, but it does because I'm more worried about what's happening stateside than I am across the ocean. Um, Absolutely. That's And that might just be me. I know that, you know, we've been at war overseas for a very long time. Uh, or let me rephrase that, the war in the Middle East. Um, and I know some people are just kind of tired of it. Uh, we have a new yeah. generation coming into the service that hasn't seen that yet. And they're kind of anxious to... Because um, what, what it is is a POG p person other than grunt um, kind of mentality where oh, I need to get some action or else I'm going to be, you know, uh, sitting behind the desk or whatever. But I'm going to be honest, man. We got a lot. We got a lot more problems happening here that we need to oh, address yeah. before we. And once again, I'm no scholar, but that's just my take on it. Um, no one's getting drafted, though. No yeah. Thing. There's no way. <clears throat> yeah, I'm. I'm a lot more concerned about shit be going on over here, stateside, than anything going on over there. Now, and, when. Uh, when we roll mm -hmm. up to your house and we say, hey, uh, you've been drafted into the uh, the Boog, that's <laughs> when you need to fucking worry, all right? Yeah, yeah. With a couple of white claws and some... Um... Some tendies. <laughs> yeah, that's when you need to hop in the back of the truck and shut the fuck up. You know, yeah. cause we're going to town. Um, that's the only draft you need to be worried about. There's no dodging yeah. it either, because it's in your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the next topic, just kind of, I don't really want to talk about foreign wars um, with what's going on here anyway. Um, the next topic is Cox. 
Oh, nice cotton grow. Uh, so you can take this one of two ways. You know, you could think of oh the uh, the phallic object, or you could say you know, uh, gamecocks, football. Um, yeah, football, yes, South. But I'm assuming this guy meant dicks, so. Yeah. Thanks, Connor Howard, but I'm not interested. <laughs> Um, next one up is ghetto guns in urban, suburban, um, I'm assuming he's talking about, like, uh, your, and no offense, but, like, your cheap PSAs or high point carbines or whatever in a, uh, in an environment such as, I don't know, your local downtown district, um, which is probably where you'd see a lot of the, uh, quote-unquote conflict unfold is in a suburban environment. Um, I'm going to be we honest. Like, are we talking Boogaloo or like... I'm assuming. You know, robbing, robbing your corner liquor store. <laughs> uh, let's do both. I mean, because, you know, you could use one for each. Um, my take would be, fuck yeah. I mean, these cheap guns, once again, it's kind of the argument with the AK. You need it to perform at, at, at below 100 yards. Honestly, you're probably going to be 25 yards, maybe 50 and in. Yeah. Um, so you're not going to worry about really the accuracy. A lot of it is going to be like indirect uh, fire or indirect suppressive fire. Because mm. especially with the people that you're looking at using these things, I mean, you know, I'm assuming most of them aren't going to have extensive training, whether it be military or law enforcement. So it's going to be a lot of the old... You know, holding the gun to the side, round the corner, peak shot type yeah. shit. Uh, I'd yeah, say yeah. in that scenario, probably worry less about quality of the gun and more about quality ammunition and quantity of ammunition that you have because you're going to be running through a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. That'd just be my take. What, what do you think about um, cheap guns getting the job done? Um, I... I like cheap guns. I have a have a Maverick, the old eighteen year old first time gun buyer special Mossberg Maverick. I like it a lot. Um, I mean, you know, if it if it works, it works. Is there something else that could cost more and you know come with more clout? Yes, <laughs> yes. But I mean, if it works, it works. Now you know. Honestly, you know, there's so many videos out there for and against, you know, like the high point C9 as like, like, oh, yeah, this is actually a good pistol. But there's so many more videos of, yeah, this thing is ass. So, you know, I wouldn't stoop to the level of using a high point for self-defense. Um, I would obviously pick PSA over like Anderson or, you know, similar manufacturer but but you're still gonna get a, a yeet cannon with me right oh absolutely man whenever the fuck high point decides to uh there send them go. out <laughs> i also want to make the distinction between uh there are cheap guns and then there are cheap guns um <laughs> yeah. so like like a high point is a cheap gun but it's also a, a shitty gun um yeah and then you have something like uh and i know i said this the last time and people are going to, I don't even own one of the damn things, but a Taurus G2C, which is a yeah. cheap gun, but works. So, you know, people are like, oh, well, if cheap gun. Yeah, I don't want you to go out there and get the, you know, a, a Jimenez uh, 380 <laughs> that's going to blow the fuck up halfway through the mag. Um, yeah. But for probably for the same price or fifty dollars more, you could get yourself a G2C, which is less likely to blow up and will probably yeah. perform like you need it to. So I don't know, man. It's it's one of those things where, and this is another argument: is like, well, what do you, what would you rather have, quantity of guns or quality of guns? And you know, it, when I first started getting firearms, the first fucking pistol I bought was a Bursa 380 in an Academy parking lot. <laughs> um, I was just trying to have guns to have guns, but, and I still kind of do that. I have a lot of weird guns, man, you know, cheap ones yeah. too, but, you know, in this, and I'm getting away from the question, but in this particular case, 
Yeah, fuck yeah. Buy a bunch of shitty guns, truck guns, whatever you want to call them. As long as they're not, like, shitty, shitty guns. And you'll know the difference. Most people do, and if you don't, it's as simple as a YouTube selection video. You just look it up. Um, the next question is what it means to be a man. Uh, I don't know. I am but a small <laughs> little boy, so I need you to answer this for me, Papa. Okay. I'm trying to decide which route to take. <laughs> I mean, there's so many there's so many different things about being a man. It's, well, I assume, once again, I, I have no clue. Still trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> but, you know what, I'm not going to take myself too seriously. I am a meme page, so <laughs> I haven't fucking figured it out yet either. I'm assuming that it's probably something to do with, you know, like... Drinking beer, shooting guns, driving a lifted truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially around here, down in the Carolinas, I'd say so. Yeah, that's the that's the that's the typical thing. Um, well, actually, beard. You know, having a beard, I would actually put that first before drinking beer. See, and that's tough because I can't. I yeah, have a really I, hard I can't time Growing one, so. Yeah, um, I can't either. It's all the radiation I was exposed to in the in the laboratory <laughs> when I was created. Yeah, for um, me, my excuse is my Native American heritage. My uncle, my uncle has a beard like a fucking goatee, and it took him forty years to get that. <laughs> I I don't have that excuse. I'm, my descendants are all like Nordlings and like Vikingish, so. Oh. <laughs> I'm pretty much a disgrace to my family. Every time I go over, they slap me in the face, make me sit in the basement for a couple hours. But yeah, um, I would say, unironically, that the stuff of men or a man, what makes you a, a good man at least, would be taking responsibility for your actions, helping others when you can, and um, not stealing memes. Yeah. Yeah, don't fucking fuck. don't repost yeah. that shit and then and then you download like a, a photo editor app and you like scrub the the tag out of it and then put your own over it. It's fucked yeah, up. That that's so wrong. Hey, now, have, you, I, have you had that happen? I, I have had that happen to me so many times. Or like it'll be, you know, somebody like take one of my memes. Like, you know, somebody that follows me. Just some random, you know, normal normie. Screenshot my meme, post it, and Instead of tagging me where my watermark is, like they'll tag like Arsenal 616 and 9mm SMG, and I'm just like, yo, what the fuck? What is, what is this? We're getting that exposure. Yeah. So I am actually guilty of um, stealing memes myself and removing the watermark, but oh, I do it just for the template. You know, if I see a good template, I'll crop out the text, put my... Okay. watermark over it and then you know so in that way i wouldn't really call that stealing i'm just taking the the image the template but yeah i always try to give credit like uh, i posted a meme today i stole from reddit and uh there's so many people on reddit who hate instagram that i don't even know if they would want me to credit them reddit's just like this whole different fucking um yeah I reddit's pretty disgusting sub- I actually have a subreddit. And, you get any uh, activity on there? Yeah, yeah. I got a couple hundred uh, members on it, but I'm really fucking lacking. I haven't even looked at it in like two weeks. It's, uh, it's r slash futtery, F-U-D-D-E-R-Y. Go post your worst gun store experiences or cursed image guns. Well, that's a that's a pretty um pretty good plug there. Um <laughs> R slash fluttery. You heard it first. Uh, yeah. I would also like to say that this question, what it takes to be a man, would be the perfect time to um, kind of do an ad read if we had any. <laughs> so in the future, if anyone's interested, if you're listening to this and you own, I don't know, like a, a barber Not shop a or club. something. Oh, my God. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Oh, what, be what, perfect is it, what does it take to be a man? Hmm, I'd say probably a subscription to Dollar Shave Club <laughs> uh, so that you can trim your man beard that I can never grow. Yeah. Uh, this, let me section live the podcast, this section of the podcast brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let me just say, you know, if you're interested, we will shamelessly read your shit on here. Oh, like yeah. Like this next question that comes from 
my my dear friend Matt. He says balls. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Balls. Podcast is canceled. <laughs> um. You know we need to do a podcast that has um, <clears throat> where we just talk about terrible experiences that you have working at the counter at a gun store. I'm going to be honest. We need to get some of the guys that we used to work with on here. Yeah. You know, we'll uh, talk about Luke, that. Luke came over last night and uh, he, you know, completely legally, he paid for the pay-per-view. We streamed the <laughs> UFC fight last night. And that shit was wild. That's like the first time I've ever actually sat down and watched a sport in my life. And I enjoyed it. I just wish that the fight lasted longer than 40 seconds. But it was pretty cool. Uh, for, so for those that don't know, Matt and Luke are people that um, we uh, worked with at uh, Academy Sports and Outdoors before I was exiled forever. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, speaking of the fight, um, and of course we're talking about the McGregor versus Cowboy fight, <laughs> which is, I don't know, it's a dumb name, I think, Cowboy, which, you know, if you're listening to this, yeah, fight me, Cowboy. I'll probably <laughs> take you yeah. out in 20 seconds this time instead of 30. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, no, please don't. I, I won't last a second. Anyway, um, that fight was wild, but the coolest fight was the, uh, the two chicks that were fighting beforehand. I don't know if you got to see that. Oh yeah, dude. They were bloody, man. The that underdog versus like the reigning champion. And yeah. she just annihilated her. There was so much blood on that mat. Um, it was insane. That was so hype. I was literally, because I was with Matt last night at, at B-Dubs, Buffalo Wild Wings, and I was screaming so so loud. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, get her ass. Um, <clears throat> all right, we've derailed. Let's get back on topic here. Um, I got a message or a response from underscore daily dropper underscore, which is apparently a clothing company. And all I said was oh, hi. Oh, no. Don't, don't talk shit about their hood, headwear. Oh my god, no. <laughs> I forgot about that. Alright, so <laughs> another story time. When I first started my page, uh, anyone that followed me before knows that uh, it got taken down um, for a little while. And I have it back now. That's what I'm using. Um, but basically what happened was, I was young and naive, and I saw some dumb shit being advertised <laughs> on Instagram. What it was, it was a uh, it was a beanie that someone had super glued like a door knocker on. One of those old-fashioned ones that you doom doom on the door, um, just fucking shamelessly super glued it to the uh, to the beanie, and I'm assuming it's supposed to look cool. But what it looked like is every time you take a step, you just get beaned in the head by this fucking door knocker. <laughs> so I commented and I was like, "This is dumb as shit," and I just basically roasted this clothing company in the comments, and um, you know, I, I go to sleep that night, you know, pretty satisfied that I just roasted them. I wake up, my account's gone. I'm like, "What the fuck?" So, I was like, how could this happen? Like, I didn't do anything. I mean, yeah, I got some spicy memes, sure. Like, you know, I was saying the F word a lot. It's like, well, maybe that's why. Um, but this this company actually ended up uh, contacting me later and being like, that's what you get for talking shit. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Um, so, I don't, I don't mess with those guys anymore. I'm not even going to give their name. Um, I'm sure if you look up, like, Door Knocker Beanie, you'll be able to find it. Uh, but don't tell them I sent you. Or do. Maybe I'll drum up some business. <laughs> Get um, them as a sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Now fuck those guys. <laughs> Unfucking believable. The All next right. one is um, Bloomberg. There is an agenda that is so big that not many people can see it. And that boy and old Soros are behind it all. You think so? Yes. I mean, we're kind of going down the road of conspiracies here. You seem pretty convinced, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of, like, hard facts to back it up, so I guess that would put it in the conspiracy category. But... Do, you, do you think that, uh, do you think he stands a chance in the upcoming election? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I do. I, I don't like any of the candidates at all that I've seen that are in this next election. 
I don't like Trump. I don't like Hillary. I don't like any of them. I'm just extremely disappointed in all these choices. America just needs to take a break, be single, soul search, and find herself. We don't need a man right now. <laughs> yes. Uh, we are a young country. We have a lot to learn. Um, <laughs> we just need to kind of, we don't need a commitment right now. We just need to kind of bounce around. Yeah. You know, while we're still young, we need to get that experience in. Yep. Um, well, you know, things are a little crazy since they put Trump in a peach. So, you know, yeah. hopefully we can get that figured out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, think that's supposed to start Tuesday, the Senate impeachment trial hearing or something but i i really don't care a whole lot like for or against i don't really care i don't know yet how much that's going to change things for i don't think it's going to get through i mean the house of representatives is one thing but i don't think it's going to get through where it needs to so that no i don't think it's going to i don't think anything's going to happen with it and it might i could be just dumb i mean sure stuff has already happened they've already pushed this stuff through but um there's definitely, with that, with that, you, right there, you can't say there's no agenda because there 100% is. They're being very blatant with the agenda. They've said from day mm-hmm. one that this is their goal is to impeach him. Uh, what's her nuts handed out, like, uh, golden pens with their, Nancy Pelosi handed out golden, or, uh, yeah, golden pens with her name inscribed on them. Like, mm-hmm. they were fucking souvenirs um, when they were signing the papers. And it's like, you know, what, what are you doing? And I'm not really a Trump fan, you know? Not, not with the way that things have gone in the past or the policies that you know have or have not happened. Um, I don't think he's doing a lot for the people that supported him. Um, no. Took the dip away from him. Right, but, but uh, at this point, you're right. I don't think that there's a valid candidate, and I definitely don't think fucking Yang is a valid candidate either. No, um, no, like through that first, I was like a thousand bucks a month. I'm in, and then you know, like I actually thought about it for another two seconds, and I was like, no, it's a terrible idea. I thought he was a cool guy until he made that guy get on his knees and he squirted whipped cream in his mouth in public. Yeah, yeah. I was like, um, <laughs> I don't want that guy in office now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You replace all of our uh, like uh, ICBMs. With uh, like just big ass cans of whipped cream and just start creaming the whole like all the other nations. <laughs> yeah. Yang's like, he just got creamed, boy, and then we get fucking nuked. Um, next up, which we've ironically already been doing, is shit on High Point for not releasing the YC nine. <laughs> um, yeah, I I made a, I posted something about that like a week or two ago. Dead ass. There have been like solid months that I just forgot about that gun, man. And uh, I didn't really remember it and get fired up about it until I watched uh, TFB TV with James Reeves' video of uh, like top 10 guns of the past decade. And he included, I'm pretty sure he included the high point YC9. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> Well, it's interesting. So, it's interesting that you say that. I know that everybody has a um, an opinion on that because luckily we have uh, the CEO of High Point coming on here uh, right now to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But um, CEO of High Point, you're more than welcome to join us and yeah. try to explain <laughs> yourself. You know, because I personally. Here's the bullshit. At, at, at the shop that I work at, we had a uh, YC9 Gen 1 come in, which is just a, a regular... Just, yeah, just engraving on it. Yeah, and I was like, okay, this is cool. And this was like, you know, when when the whole debacle was going down. Fast forward, like, you know, however many months it's been, and I still haven't seen a goddamn uh, Gen 2. And no. I'm pissed. And I think... It would be really fucked up if, if they did what everyone's saying they're going to do and just be like, oh, oh, that? What are you guys talking about? We forgot about that. No, it's crazy. Yeah, or, oh, yeah, that was, that was, yeah, that was a joke. It was a meme. We'd never listen to our customers. I mean, to be fair, this is coming from the company that thought it meant, like, jizz. The jizz <laughs> cannon. <laughs> uh, whatever. Yeah. 
I mean, if, if at this point they haven't figured out how to shave their guns down by a few more pounds, I have no hope for them. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to get one just for the just for the lulls, of course. So me and the boys went in and got the whole, pretty much the whole gun community together on one subject, which that's probably never going to fucking happen again. Oh, but it did. It's just, uh, here's another controversy. Um, f- f- I don't remember his name, but the guy that was holed up in his attic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever well, happened to that guy? That was old Whiskey Warrior 556. I didn't know until that day that I didn't, I didn't realize I actually followed that dude because when I went to Georgia, Fort Benning to see my buddy at Basic, I put up there and he had, I'd messaged him, talked to him for a while. About He's like, yeah, man, go check out the Infantry Museum and all that. And I'd had a bunch of conversation with the dude. And I'm pretty sure that was all in New York. So he uh, left out when he was doing all this live on this story. He was he left out the fact that uh you know yeah I was beating beating my wife and they're not they're not only here for the magazine they're also here you know for, yeah they're here for me. There's still some aspects of that story that don't add up to me. Yeah um, yeah there's there's a lot like um the when when it was going on there were multiple reports over police radio that people around there were listening to and it it had every possible scenario being broadcasted like shots fired officer down. Shots fired, going inside, suspect apprehended, and it's like everything, you know, disinformation, so nobody actually knew what was happening. But then when they get there, they say, oh, no guns recovered, no magazines, no ammo. Yeah, and that kind of worries me, that uh, thought of the disinformation, you know, know, looking at Virginia tomorrow. (laughs) Aside from the people who are actually going to be there, putting it on Instagram, you know, what's happening, we're not going to really know what's going on. You know, if you just looked at the news, because they're going to be painted as white supremacist, domestic terrorist, and extremist, and all that. Well, at this point, if you if you rely on the mainstream news to get your information, you're dumb. Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're too far gone. It's 2020. There's there's no way you can take any of that seriously. And actually, if you whatever source you're using, if you're not fact checking it yourself. Um, I don't care how reliable you think it is, you're still dumb. You should, um, because the information that you take in is uh, is very important. It's how you see the world, and uh, you know to go into everything with uh, one side of the story, it's it's a bad idea. Um, that being said, uh, I don't know who's guilty or innocent in that situation with a good old whiskey warrior, but um, I do know that. Uh, the community rallied behind that. And this is something we didn't get to talk about because we weren't doing episodes at that point. Yeah. Um, but the amount of support that I saw for that guy, whether he's a piece of shit or not, the support is what yeah. I'm worried about. Everybody was coming out of the woodwork. You know, you had people organizing stuff, people actually showing up, driving the distance to go help this guy. Um, it was amazing. And it really kind of demonstrated that, um, you know, when, when shit's getting bad, there are going to be people that are ready to go. Um, so, And I was very proud of the community for that. Um, yeah, yeah, it made me really happy too. And I think it <clears throat> situations like that are probably why this whole Virginia thing is kind of getting blown a little out of proportion. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to say that people are extreme in their views. I don't want to call anyone an extremist. But there are definitely some people that are willing to die for it. Um, to go like all out, balls to the wall, you know, let's get it. Um, and I think that does scare some people. There's going to be people like that in every group, and let's be real, it's a violation of some rights. So, you know, whatever side of the fence you're on, um, it's it's going down. But uh, next up, we have uh, gun bunnies. Now, this is interesting because um, I showcase a, a gun bunny on my, my page. It's my girlfriend, and nothing ever came of that. Now, let me let me take this as another shameless plug moment here. Any companies out there, Terran Tactical, you know, she, she has, she has, um, she she's cute. I think she's beautiful. Um, come pick her up. <laughs> 
let's let's get this partnership going. You know, uh, all I got for to hold are like my PMR thirty. So let's get some like oh. uh, combat master fucking Glock uh, modded shit Very in their cool. hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let's let's get this train rolling. Um, mm-hmm. train. No, I. <laughs> I, I do think that it'd be cool to have uh, your wife, my girlfriend, and whoever else uh, do their own little gun bunny podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife, she wants to make her own Instagram page. She's first is trying to pick out a username because I had, you know, I had told her, you know, not to uh, go for anything. I mean, not that she would, but anything stupid like. Um, let me let me think like Yeeter Boogaloo or <laughs> dead dead ass anything with Boogaloo in the name or Yeet or Death or Accelerate. You gotta or be three percent. You know, yeah. <laughs> if you want to be taken seriously, gotta be a little more original than that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so she's still in the process of picking out a name, but she wants to start her page and uh, just make sure that everybody. In, uh, in America and their states and all are aware of what rights they do have, not you know not just pertaining to gun ownership. I see. Make sure that everybody is knowledgeable of their own rights and uh, share news as unbiasedly as possible. It's a pretty big task. Um, yeah, to undertake. yeah, it is. And that's um, that would be interesting, and I commend her for that. Um, and. So gun bunnies, uh, obviously we have kind of our version of that, um, but I will say, you know, don't knock the hustle, bro. If if I could if I could get out there in some lingerie and just you know whip a Mossberg 500 around, like I don't yeah. know, lick the barrel or something, and just get like millions of dollars, you know damn well I'd do it. I'd I'd sell my soul for a million dollars. Are you kidding me? If I could just, you know, uh, but I'm not. I'm not a girl, nor am I that attractive. Now, someone like uh, Grantham, whew, that's a man right there. And he can get out there and make that money. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. uh, no, I'm just some pale ginger kid. Um, if I tried to do that, I'd probably get arrested. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm not knocking the hustle. The only issue I have with gun bunnies because they do have a large following. Um, the only issue I have with them is when they try to take a stance that they shouldn't. Um, so yeah. like a lot of the political shit, um, I don't know, unless unless they're very knowledgeable. And I'm, I'm not saying just because if you're an attractive woman and you like guns, you can't have political opinions. But what I am saying is if you have a stupid opinion or one that uh, has no backing to it and but you do have gigantic tits, you know, I'm not going to sit here and listen to it just because you're attractive and nor should anyone else. Um, yeah. That goes the same for anybody, but especially people that have a following based on their looks. Uh, don't abuse that to spread misinformation. That's my only issue mm. with it. Other than that. Yeah, whatever. I mean, they're just doing their thing. Uh, I think people get really upset. Um, and if you're listening to this, Alex Zedra, uh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but yeah, I, it, it ain't nothing. Just let it happen. Just, uh, it's the same thing with, um, same thing with meme pages, you know? They, yeah, absolutely. They post, they post stuff and they have their opinions. If their opinion's dumb, they shouldn't use their influence to spread it. But whatever, whatever. What what are your thoughts when you when you scroll through your your feed and you see, you know, a female with her you know junk hanging out and a a gun, you get all upset. No, no, not upset. Now, when I think Gun Bunny. The first one that comes to mind is the old Sophie Swainy. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure. Didn't she get like cast into the depths of hell or something based on her lips or <laughs> the lips? The lips. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. didn't even know she was still around. I thought she like just gave up after that. Um, I don't know. I I I never followed her very closely. 
I, I know I just know that she lost her right and uh right uh, no uh hollow sun or right and optics. I can't remember. But she she lost her sponsorship <laughs> over that one. So you know kinda Because of her lips happen. Yes, the lips. Yeah, but how do you lose your sponsorship over people memeing your lips? Uh, just what did they, bad publicity. Did they look well, at it and right. be like, whoa, 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 those lips look way too much like an asshole. We, we got to pull out. We're not having uh, it. All right, hold on. I don't know if you know the whole story here. Yeah, I, I don't think I do. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, fill me in. Okay. All right. Well, everyone. <laughs> um. Yeah, she had posted a picture. She had just gotten a sponsorship with, um, I don't know, I think it was, yeah, Rides and Optics. And I don't know who or how, but somebody had found some nudes of her on X videos of her blown out donut ring. <laughs> that is just completely, like, that gasket is uh, gone. <laughs> and uh, people were posting them left and right. And, uh, yeah, obviously the company that was sponsoring her, they didn't want their name to be in there with those lips, as you called it. Them lips. So, yeah, the lips. So that, so they cut, they cut her off. So I kind of hate, I hate to see that happen to her. Um, so yeah, rest in peace, uh, Miss Sweeney. Yeah. Uh, the Boogaloo, Death the Boogaloo, which we've already kind of talked about, uh, it's kind of, once again, just look look to Virginia if you want. Yeah, Boogaloo has really been a topic for this whole podcast. So, give me give me your real quick uh, guest speaker, um, Hannah. Give me your thoughts on the Boogaloo. What do you mean? Come, come here. Come I don't know much about the Boogaloo. <laughs> you don't know much about the Boogaloo. No. What, in your opinion, um, is going to happen in Virginia tomorrow, where they have the uh, the gun rally? And um, they're not allowing guns on the premises, and they're trying to ban mm. guns. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it should be a peaceful thing, but I, people are probably going to lose their shit over it. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I could see it happening. But you definitely support the rights of the people to own weapons. Yeah, I want to own my own. Well, I do own my own gun. Right. Pistol. And um. It was interesting because when the uh, when the whiskey war thing was happening, we were talking about red flags, and you got very upset about the red flag laws. Go ahead, tell me about that. <laughs> On the spot. I feel so awkward. Oh my god. Go ahead though. Go ahead. What well, What do you mean? Well, you had some pretty strong opinions on the red flag laws. You were talking. Well, yeah, about because them. if I want to, if I want to own a gun so I can defend myself, I should I have the right to. So I don't think anybody should try and take it away from me. I mean, I'm a girl, for God's sake. Anybody, I've got noodle arms. I'm weak. My best option is just to shoot and pray the person dies. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> Stendo <laughs> Clipazine's girlfriend, everybody. Woo! So, so let me, one, one last question, then I'll let you go watch whatever you're about to watch. Um, if right now you heard the sound of gravel crunching, Dogs barking, <laughs> and you heard a, a van door slam, and then you heard surround the fucking house. Um, would you help me load up that AK over there to shoot ourselves with, or to shoot? Everybody else? <laughs> I would. I would hope that we're shooting our way out of here, but I mean, damn, if it comes down to it, I'll save two bullets. I mean, I think we can do. We're it. gonna take the good fight to it. Yeah, I think we can do it. You think we could do it? Mine's improved. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, you heard it first here. Um, <laughs> we're we're ready. I'm so cringe. We I gotta. Uh, I, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Good. Um. Yeah, I'm not gonna answer that boogaloo question. We've already talked about that. <laughs> uh. Okay. Here's another thing. Uh, Shot show predictions. Versus what we actually want to see. Uh, did Chacho already come and go? No, that, that's no, not. No, no. Yeah, it's, um, I think it starts tomorrow. It's going to be this week. This coming week. We'll I see haven't kept up with that of, at all. We'll see a bunch of fucking cancer. Like, I'm going to put this out there. I've said it a couple times before. I don't even know if you know. But 
Taurus does manufacture AR-15s. Did you know that? Uh, I feel like you've told me before, but it's not general knowledge, I don't think so. And I'm, I'm just disappointed. I don't know. I, I'm just sad that they make AR-15. So what 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 I expect to see? Expect to see um, the high point YC9, you know, just massively advertised. If hopefully they do stick with it, yeah, just advertise the old yeet cannon, like all the signs go. everywhere, and lots of publicity covering it. When they unveiled the gun last year, it's been a whole year hyping it up. <laughs> they still can't even give a release date. <laughs> Yeah, um, so that and um, I saw some new night vision products rolling out, slimmer low profile mini dual tubes. Oh, yes. can't afford any of that at all. But um, everybody, well, you know, just during a boogaloo, during a boogaloo, equips equips Scavenger Pro <laughs> in marathon. Don't forget marathon. Yeah, marathon Scavenger Pro and sleight of hand. Well, mostly it's dudes out here. On Instagram, or running Warlord Pro over um, sleight of hand, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> the old Bubba Mall Ninja AR. I'm thinking I'm just going to do the, uh, fuck, what was the name? One Man Army and just keep noob tubing him. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, but let's see, what else from Shot Show? I think High Point had put out, they were, you know, they had some something in the works for some kind of rifle that was going to be unlike the other stuff that they've produce but i have i have no idea a rifle that isn't shaped like a tree limb that's interesting <laughs> yeah. um or, yeah that doesn't look like a prosthetic leg <laughs> yeah you, you're forgetting about the uh the uh ruger 57 oh yeah yeah i i did i am forgetting about that i haven't made any memes about it i haven't really said anything about it on my page because well one i'm glad that somebody is um you know giving fn a run for their money mm-hmm but I really, for me, I don't see five seven as a cartridge that I really need. So I'm glad it's happening, but I have no intent to buy it unless unless um, more manufacturers get on board with manufacturing of uh, five seven, and you know that just drives the price down so much that you know it's at least on par with forty or forty five would be manageable price <clears throat> yeah i have no idea what's gonna have come from shot show but i need to go ahead and just get some templates going get some templates ready yeah so <clears throat> kind of like what you were saying they yeah see some high point probably drum up some business for the uh the eight cannon so that's really all they have going for them right now yeah yeah that's keeping them alive uh the ruger in terms of what I want to see, I'm going to just jump right into that because I know what I'm going to see is just a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> what I want to yeah. see is I want to see more options in the 5.7 cartridge. I think it's interesting that Ruger's doing this five, or, uh, 57, and then Spear is coming out with some affordable 5.7 ammo as well. Kind of interesting how they've timed the two. There might be a partnership there. Fuck if I know. But it'd be interesting to if, they, if you saturate the market with 5.7, just make it so that everybody's shooting 5.7 now. I personally think that'd be kind of cool, and then you can start looking at your CMMG Banshees in 5.7, because um, mm -hmm. those things are, are cool. Uh, maybe some more AR platforms uh, like that in 5.7. I like 5.7 as a cartridge. Um, I'd like to see it kind of grow a little bit. I think that'd be neat. Um, and then, like what you were saying with the night vision, somebody, somewhere, needs to do some cheap, affordable, not terrible, because I'm not talking like ATN with some cheap, affordable, <laughs> like nods. Please, the God. ATN stuff. ATN stuff is actually a, it's it's a it's lower level, but it's better than the Sight Mark Ghost Hunter. I mean, you, you're not wrong, but I'm trying to get some like you know, put them on my ACH and flip them down Bravo Six going dark style. <laughs> and I'm trying yeah. to keep it, you know, affordable. I don't want to take out a mortgage for some some night vision goggles. Yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Just what I keep telling myself is either, you know, I'll come across a good deal and then buy or, uh, you know, right before the boogaloo, just max out my fucking credit card. And <laughs> one thing I keep thinking about with the big igloo is, well, I won't have to go to work. There you go. 
Yeah. I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> not looking forward to having to shit in a bucket though. That's no, gonna suck. No, <laughs> not that. No AC. Need to go ahead and get it started while it's still fairly cool outside. Gonna have to Either murder and post- eat the neighbor dog. Yeah, or postpone it another eight months until it cools down. Yeah, yeah. Uh too hot. Boogaloo next month. <laughs> yeah, Boogaloo cancelled. <laughs> um but no, it'd be really cool and it would absolutely destroy on the market if someone were to come up with like so you look at like hollow sun red dots which mm-hmm. are like cheaper and affordable and people buy the hell out of those um i don't know somebody do it please it'd be cool i'd buy one you know if it's yeah. if it's a decent price the the last the last one i have on here and we're approaching about the hour mark uh right now pre pre-edit um worst fuddery you've seen and this is an interesting one for the last one because i know us working together we definitely have some stories um i'd like to start this off by saying look no further than fud's gun shop's uh profile (laughs) picture that is without a doubt the worst fuddery i personally have ever seen Um, yes that man's the epitome of fud (laughs) For anyone that doesn't know, that that image um, is based off of a customer that we had who would come into our place of business, and I, I don't know how to describe the guy other than um, if, if, a, if tuna was a person, <laughs> it would look like this guy. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, we, we referred to him as camo hat guy because I never fucking sold him a gun. He would he wouldn't ever buy one, so I never knew his name. I'm sure he told me I just forgot. But there were two occasions that he came in, and uh, and he was like, "Hey man, let me see that uh, Sentry Arm C308 Sporter." And I was like, "All right," you know, it was like uh, seven ninety nine, and he was like, "All right," he's like, "Put a uh, Vortex Crossfire on here, put a sling on it, extra magazine." couple different kinds of ammo you know he's like set me up man put everything on here you can and i'm gonna buy it and i was like oh shoot cool because you know those c308s they didn't move very fast so it was like fal knockoffs yeah so uh so yeah dude so i set this man up i got him like everything and then i gave him the total and it was like 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 pretty close to two thousand dollars and he was like all right that's great man hold up i left my wallet in the truck I had never saw him again. <laughs> I had to take all that shit off that gun and put it away. Classic. He he would come in with uh, his, I'm assuming, girlfriend and son, maybe. Um, and he'd stand at the counter for hours just talking about his professional military experience where he... Uh, he the the one that sticks with me is he was describing how he got this this scar on his leg which looked like he might have slipped up while he was shaving them or something i don't know it was like a little little nick and he was like i got this here from when a 50 bmg grazed by my leg and it oh, damn near yeah. tore the whole thing off i was like holy shit <laughs> but i want to say he he said that he would take a, a taurus or something like a gtc he said oh, if i could go back this would be my sidearm over there. The last time I saw him was that uh, was that gun show that we went to at the uh, Freemasons place, mm-hmm. and I saw him, and he was holding a Anderson. It was it was an Anderson AR that was coated and had Deadpool stickers on it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so. This guy would probably be the guy that, uh, you know, if something were to happen and you're out in the woods and you meet him, he'd be like, oh, let's team up. And the second you turn around, he'd fucking shoot you in the back of the head, steal all your shit and go hide under it like a tree for a month. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. That's this guy. Absolutely. You know, this is the guy when you're taking your girl to the store to look at Glock 43s and Shield 9s, and he's like, that's too big for your hands, girl. All you need is a 22 North American arms. Yes. It bounces off the bone, bitch. One, one of my worst flutter experiences other than that guy was this dude to come in. He was straight up stolen valor, man. And I called him out on it, but everything 
everything that I tried to hit him with, <laughs> he had this extravagant story to back it up. So he came in one day, and you remember those Adam's Arms piston ARs that we had? Uh, yeah. They were uh, they had the FTE furniture, and they had a uh, shitty Air Force Airsoft NC Star Optic on them. You know, so that gun on the shelf next to a bare bones black Smith Wesson M P. People are going to want to see the one that's a different color and comes with optic. You know, I try to explain to people, yeah, this optic is trash. Don't look at this gun just for the optic. And they're like, oh, well, it comes with one. I'm like, oh, my God. Well, this dude comes in, and lo and behold, that's what he wanted to see. All right, so this rifle did not have iron sights. It didn't have a flip or fixed rear. didn't have a flip or fixed front. All it had on it was, it was flat top, and it had the NC Star red dot. So I was like, I handed it to him. I cleared it and handed it to him, and he's turned the red dot on he was looking down at it. he was like dude this red dot is way off <laughs> i was like what are you talking about man you have nothing in there at all to uh um, co-witness that with no irons no nothing how can you tell he was like man you've handled as many firearms as i have you can feel it <laughs> <laughs> straight face man so so it doesn't end there so he was like, you know what, man, I'm going to help you out. I was like, okay. So he starts, uh, he starts messing with the, with the dials on it, up, down, left, right. And he didn't know it, but he was just turning the, uh, the covers back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> the, the <laughs> he sat there for five minutes, and I would just watch him try my best not to just fall on the floor laughing. And, it, and dude, his face when he realized that he was turning the cover because it came off in his hand, <laughs> priceless. Did he did he continue to try to adjust him after that, or he was like, "Oh, it's fixed." He, he left soon after. <laughs> I probably would too. Yeah. I that's that's in my cringe compilation for sure. <laughs> We've got so many more. Like, I'm going to throw one more in. It's not really a photo story, but last night me and Luke were swapping the old gun bar cringe stories. And, uh, you know, as a as a FFL employee, I remember they told us we had the option to, like, you know, if it just doesn't feel right or if they're, like, drunk or if they're, like, high as shit or if they're just sketchy, you know, they said you can at your discretion, you know, just stop the sale. And I only had to do that one time. You know, I'm pretty open-minded. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt, you know. I don't, I mean, yeah, so I, I try my best not to just judge people. Now, this guy comes in, guy and his wife comes in, and he wanted to look at the Taurus M605 357 revolver. And uh, it was late today. We weren't busy. He was the only customer. So I showed it to him. We talked about it. He was like, yeah, man, I'm going to get it. And he was totally chill dude. You know, no red flags at all. Just a normal-ass dude, like 40-something. So then, uh, this was back before the E4473, so I handed him the paper, and he's filling it out, and he gets down to the question boxes. I don't remember which number it is, but it said, uh, it's the one that says, are you, or have you ever been convicted of a misdemeanor or a felony? Mm -hmm. And then this dude just, like, straight face looks up at me and says, yo, is manslaughter a felony? And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, all right, all right. He's like, okay, let me tell you the whole story, you know, because I'm, you know, because we're the people that decide that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, so me and my buddies about five years ago, we were all out in the field drinking. He said we're all drunk as shit, and he said he had just got a forty-four magnum, a box of forty-four magnum rat shot, right? So yeah. now you know, twenty-two mat, twenty-two long rifle rat shot is probably not going to kill you. Yeah. It might not even break the skin. But this is 44 Magnum rat shot. So he yeah. said they were all drunk as hell. He got up on top of his truck, turned the headlights on, and his buddy said, his buddy volunteered for it. It was his idea. He said, yo, I'm going to take off running 50 yards that way. You shoot me in the back, and I'll see if it hits me. He fucking killed the guy. Jesus. Yeah, so after he told me the story, I slowly just slid the paper away from him and put the gun back in the safe. And I was like, I was like, we're not doing this, man. Yeah, I mean, it is possible he he went, to have that. He went in the A and D. He went in the A and D database that day. Yeah, though. for sure. I I will say at at this other job, I've had some people come in that uh, 
you know, have done some some bad things, but they've had it expunged and to, to get proceeds. Yeah, well, I, I asked this dude, and he said that he he did he did do jail time for it. So I don't know if that would I don't know how that would have turned out. But yeah, I'm not sure. He probably did the right thing, though. I mean, he to be fair, uh, Nick's probably would have caught him, but. Yeah, it's yeah. better to just turn that away before it gets crazier. Um, another cringe story that happened while I was uh, working for Academy. Um, so Academy, or at least the one that we ha- we were at, had this policy where they said, uh, don't hold any firearms um, for anyone at all. And so the, I show up to my shift, and the guy that's working at the counter is like, yo, there's this guy coming, his name's Bob. Like, I'm holding a firearm for him. I was like, you know what, fuck it, whatever. You know, he'll come in here, he's like, he's driving like six hours to get here, he's making a day trip out of it to get here, it's the last one we have, I put his oh, name on it. Oh, this one of those Yildas, those Yildas 410s? I don't remember, but I do know that it was the only one that we had, and I was like, okay, cool, uh, I'll get it for Bob. Guy walks out that made the initial sale, uh, he, he left for the day, so I get back there, and this old dude shows up like a couple hours later. And he's like, hey, you have any of this gun? I forgot what it was. It might have been one of those 410s. And I was like, I do, but I'm holding it for somebody. Um, I was like, do you happen to be Bob? Since he walked in, he said the name of the gun. I was like, well, you know, maybe this is the guy. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's me. It's like, okay, cool. (laughs) Okay, thanks, Bob. So, like, I get his license, and his name's Robert. And I'm like, Okay. okay, well, you know, maybe Bob's a nickname. Either way, I let him start the paperwork, which is where I should have been like, hey, you know, is you, are you really Bob? But he said he was, so I took his word for it because who would lie to me, right? <clears throat> he gets about halfway done with his paperwork, and this chick and I think her husband show up. And they're like, oh, we finally made it. And as soon as I said that, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, and they were like, so we're here for that gun. And the guy stops his paperwork and looks at him. He's like, Oh, you're you're too late. <laughs> like he's a super <laughs> like he's a super villain or something. He's like, You're too late. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm watching the situation play out in front of me and I'm like, Are you Bob? And the the uh the lady was like, Yeah, that's my husband, he's right here. We just drove six hours and I was like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like this guy's doing the paperwork for your gun and I thought she was gonna fucking beat his ass right there. Um She didn't, <laughs> but she was like, "Sir, just stop doing the paperwork. Like that's that's our gun." He's like, "I got here first. I don't understand. I'm I'm a customer just like you are." And she was like, "What? Where do you live?" Like he's like, "Oh, ten minutes down the road." But I wanted this gun and I got here first. <laughs> oh my god! She's like, "We just drove six hours. This guy did not give a fuck. He was walking out of there with that gun that day." So I called the manager over, and the manager is like, "I don't know." It's like, "Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead, man. G- give give the guy his gun. He got here first. And I was like, "Yo, that's crazy. These guys are gonna kill us." And, of course, they tried to make the compensation with, like, oh, you know, here's a gift card. But yeah, that was my fault. But I've never seen two people look like they wanted to murder me, the guy next to me, and the dude across the counter so bad. It was it was bad, man. And <laughs> I've never had a situation like that before. But from then on, uh, if your name doesn't match what's on your license, I'm not selling you a fucking gun. There's no way. If you, if you if you tell me your name is something and I look at your license and it's something different, I'm like, yo, you better hold up. Yeah, you better get right real quick, or else you're not getting this gun. And I've carried that with me, but uh, in the end, yeah, <laughs> fake Bob left with the gun, and um, God, just just a just a real cringe moment. <laughs> not really a fud moment. I know we kind of got off topic there, but uh. Real bad shit. You got you got yeah. any more uh, fud fuddery? That's all that I have in the front of my mind now. Our next podcast, we need to do it a lot sooner than six months apart. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this next one, I think we should you know write down a couple of examples we can recall and and definitely go over them. <laughs> we get we can do be, that. Be some time. good content. I also want to say that I want to get. Uh, a guest speaker. Um, yeah. I, I really want to get somebody else in here talking that we can bounce ideas off of. And, you know, if anyone's listening to this and they're like, wow, I'd really like to be on this uh, shipwreck of a podcast. Um, dude, let's go. Get, get on here. Get yourself <laughs> a Discord. Like I said, I want to get 
uh, some of the guys that we worked with on here. And that'd be cool, but I also want to get someone that we don't really know, maybe like a follower or something. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I've got a bunch of followers that would like to, but I probably, can barely, probably I can schedule time to get this done with you. Yeah, well, you know. We'll, we'll make it happen. I'm a tease like that, so. <laughs> uh, just as long as it's not somebody with the name like Hang and burn all red coats sixty nine sixty nine six six six. Yeah, um, <laughs> that might be a little extreme. Uh, and, and you know, once again, you're allowed to have your opinions, but if you get on here and you start screaming like about the chemicals turning the frogs gay, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> but um, yeah, I <clears throat> this is this has been good. We kind of went over dedicated this whole thing really to those uh those questions but those are some good questions we hit a lot of topics that are um relevant so. they are they are i apologize for losing all of my questions but next time we'll have more for sure um anything you want to plug or get out there before we uh shut this down um all gun laws are infringements and <laughs> yeah it's going down in virginia so Stock up on medical supplies, water, body armor, ammo, <laughs> the good shit. Hell, hell yeah. Um, I was thinking like maybe like merch, but that's definitely oh. a good that's definitely a good <laughs> message to send. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what do you what do you have to end on? Um, I don't have any merch, but <laughs> if you want to buy some shit, I guess just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I would like to say thank you for anyone that's listening to us or anyone that follows either yeah. FUDS or me. Uh, you guys are great. I know that. Yeah, it was great. And honestly, if you've gotten this far in a fucking podcast, I don't know what else. You must not have a lot going on in your life. Yeah, you're probably just really bored. <laughs> yeah. Um, Go outside. Get some sunlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take, take a break from all this cancer <laughs> that you've been listening to. Um. But yeah, I appreciate it. I'm going to shut down the recording now. Um, I love everybody. World peace. Uh, Virginia United. Um, stay frosty. <laughs>